Hey guys and welcome back. In this video, we shall see the unboxing as well as setup of Tapo C500 camera. It is an outdoor camera which can be tilt or which also features the 360 degree motion tracking. So without any further ado, let's start with the unboxing part. After we are finished with the unboxing, we shall see how to set it up in the Tapo application and how we can set up the motion detection as well as the recording schedule. So we shall discuss all of the features one by one. And with this camera, we need a memory card to save the recordings that we are going to uh, do on this camera. So either you can use a memory card or you can use NVR to record and save the recordings of the tapo camera but anyways since i'm not going to use any nvr with the camera so i'm going to use a sandisk memory card so let's first check out the camera so this is the box and uh, you can see the some of the features which are available with this camera it's written here it's an outdoor camera with pan or tilt function and it can be connected with the wi-fi so you don't have to run ethernet cable along with the camera it can be used with wi-fi and as you can see it comes with 1080 pixel full high definition that is the full hd then it can be used for 360 degree motion tracking which means if there is some motion in front of the camera then it can be used to track that motion and also as you can see it has artificial intelligence person detection so this ai person detection feature of tapo camera works very well and I can say that with confidence because this is not my first camera. I have one more C310 camera installed at my place and it, it works very well. The AI person detection, the motion detection, area intrusion, as well as many other detections which are possible with this camera. And then you can see it comes with IP65 water and dust resistant. So you can install this camera outside your home. Then the micro SD card slot is there which can support up to 512 gb so 512 is a big number and uh, i have bought 256 gb for my this camera and you can see it works with hey google it works with amazon alexa and then tapo c500 is the model name then let's see what else we have here world's number one tp link is the world's number one wi-fi product provider for consecutive 11 years All right Let's see what is on the side. So you can find the specification of the camera here. Field of view is 360 degree horizontally. Then video definition is 1080p. That is the full HD display. Then the audio is two way, which means it has built in microphone and a speaker. So which basically means if you have any guest standing outside your place or in front of the camera, then you can use the camera to have a two way communication with that person. Then it comes with night vision. Night vision is also very good with the Tapo cameras. Then the wireless protocol. So from here you can see it supports 2.4 gigahertz channel. Then the adapter input is there. And uh, the adapter is going to output 12 volt DC. That is 1 ampere. And it comes with IP65 weather resistant. Then inside the package we are going to get Tapo C500 camera. Then power adapter, installation guide, mounting bracket. Mounting screws, mounting template, anchors and screws, waterproof seal. And that Tapo application is available for both Android as well as iOS. And still if you are having problem searching for the application, then you can scan it from here and then the phone is going to directly take you to the Tapo application in the respective Play Store or the App Store. Then turning back side, we have this some more features so smart person detection and motion tracking now this smart ai identifies a person while tracking motion with high speed rotation notifying users as needed and uh, as i have explained earlier also this ai of tapo tp link camera works very well then here as you can see if we talk about the features it has 1080p full hd then it is flexible with storage options you can either buy one micro sd card or you can use Tapo Care Cloud Storage Service. Obviously, you will have to pay for this cloud storage service. So you can use either of these features to save the recordings of your camera. Then we have 360 degree visual, which means it provides a 360 degree horizontal and 130 degree vertical range. And then finally, let's turn over. And here you can see how we can fix it up. Either we can fix it on the wall or we can fix it on the roof. 
all right this is the upside so it comes with one year warranty this is the toll free number let's see the bottom of the box and here you can find the information regarding the manufacturer the importer as well as the mrp mrp is six triple nine that is in indian rupees so let's open up the box now Let's check them out one by one. General public license notice. So if I'm not wrong, this is the mounting template, which means you can use this template. Just keep it on the wall or on your uh, roof. And then using it, you can just directly drill into the holes. And then directly you can fix the camera on those holes using the screws. So this is the mounting template. Then after that, we have this quick start guide. Just give some information regarding the camera as well as the content of the box. So as you can see, we have a camera power adapter. Then we have camera bracket, mounting template, which we have seen right now. Then mounting anchors. We are going to insert these anchors into the holes that we are going to drill. Then on top of those anchors, we have to use these mounting screws. And then we have these bracket screws also. Bracket screws are going to be used to tighten the bracket with the camera then waterproof seal we need to use the waterproof seal with the cables we are going to see that later how we have to do that so the microphone is down here all right then the indication if it is solid red which means it's starting up nothing much to discuss about here and then we have to download the app then here we have the details or the instructions on how to hang the camera so using the mounting template we have to drill four screw holes and then mount camera bracket then we have to mount the bracket the camera bracket into those holes and then finally we have to install the camera into the bracket using two bracket screws and then we have to connect the power and then while connecting the power we have to use this waterproof seal so that we don't have to face any problem in case of any uh, rainfall over the camera this is the second option second option is when you want to mount the camera on a wall or on a pole anyways let's keep this aside power adapter that is one ampere this is the mounting bracket so this is the place where the holes are going to go inside then we have to use the mounting screw here and here after we install the camera here so that the camera can be kept into its place this is the waterproof seal then these are the mounting anchors and then we have the screws and here is our camera so it's little heavy i can say let's check if the weight is written here so according to the box the weight is 0.73 kg and the camera is off this is actually one of the feature of this camera for the privacy the camera shuts down the lens physically for providing privacy to the user or the owner as you can see the camera has been shut down the lens is closed so this is the place where we have to insert the memory card so you can see the reset button is also going to be inside this and then the second thing is memory card so both of them are going to go inside and to make the memory card port accessible we have to open up this small compartment so we have to take out the screws so i'll just do that quickly so i have taken out the screws and you can see now the memory card port is accessible and also we can see the reset button for the reset button you can use a pen or a small screwdriver to access the reset button and this is the memory card port i'm just going to insert the memory card now so this is the memory card that i have got 
its high endurance card which is specifically made for dash cams or home security cameras it comes with 256 gb of storage space and it supports 4k that is ultra hd here it is you can check out the mrp the mrp is 6600 even though you are going to get it for much less than that anyways let me just open it up and it's a good thing that it comes with a uh, adapter because if you want to access it in your computer you might need this adapter so i have the memory card now and let's insert it so i don't know if it's visible for you or not but the memory card has to be inserted in this way as you can see here so we have to insert it like this yes i can hear a click that means the memory card is inserted well now i just have to close this part i have closed up the compartment so i have screwed it up nicely now it's time to turn on our camera the length of the power cord is quite long actually i think it's near about uh, i think it's near about 3 meters so it's a good length i'm not so sure if it's going to help you or not but it's it's a good length so i'll just plug in my camera now and uh, let's see it start up yeah it's starting up you can see the red color here actually the camera is supposed to be like this and uh, it's working you can see i'm not actually doing anything it's rotating on its own so i guess it's booting up so you can see now the lens has opened up on its own so i'm just going to keep it here for now and then we have to open up the tapo application on our phone so i have installed tapo application on my phone so this is the application that i'm talking about so i'll just open it up so this is the home page or the home screen of the tapo application and you can see there's one camera already installed which says gate left which means this camera is actually on the left side of the gate that's why i've written it gate left just to quickly identify it now the next camera that i have bought i'm going to install it on the right side so that camera will be gate right for me and if you want to see how does the live feed is going to look like after we install the tapo c500 camera so it will look some, something like this but in this live feed we cannot turn it or tilt it or rotate it nothing can be done we can only watch it but in case of the c500 camera that we are going to install now we can turn it around so after installing the tapo application you have to sign in or you have to register in the tapo application with your email id after the registration is done it's going to ask you if you want to add a device if it's not going to ask then you can just tap here on the plus icon like this and then you will have to add a device so you will have to choose the camera which you have bought so my previous camera was this one c310 now the next camera is c500 so i'll have to search for that and it's here tap on c500 so i'll just tap on it so it's saying keep your phone or tablet close to the tap on device throughout the setup which means we have to be close to the camera while we are setting up the camera and uh, the camera should be blinking red and green so let us check our camera so you can see our camera is also blinking red and green which means we are good to go so if you are also getting the red and green uh, blinks then you can just tap here which says already red and green and in case if the led is not blinking red and green then you can tap here and uh, you will have to reset the camera you can see the information is here reset your tapo device if the led is blinking amber then amazon ffs is in progress please wait a moment for it to finish alternatively you can press the reset button or if the led is not blinking amber then tilt the tapo device lens up then press and hold the reset button for at least 5 seconds so in both the cases it's recommended to reset the camera so if you have resetted your camera and finally you are getting the red and green uh, blinks then you are ready and you can tap here which says already red and green now it says connect to your tapo device 
so for that we'll have to go to the phone's wi-fi setting since i'm using my phone if you're using your tablet then you can go to your wi-fi setting in your tablet and then we'll have to join the tapo devices network so it will be something like tapo cam and then xxxx and these four x's are the last four digits of tapo devices unique mac address so you can check out the box of your camera and from there you can check out the mac address of your camera so the last four digits of your mac of your camera will be replaced by these x's so let me open the wi-fi settings all right let's check out the camera so you can see i have this tapo cam 2a e6 so that means 2a e6 is the last four digits of the mac of my camera so i'll just have to connect to this and e even if you get messages like there's no internet connection with this wi-fi and, and your phone asks for your permission to disconnect to the wi-fi you just keep it connected just keep it connected do not reconnect it then after that just return back to your application and then you can see your camera will be found on its own you don't have to do anything you just have to make sure that the wi-fi of your camera is connected to your phone and after that you will have to give an internet connection to your camera and since it is a wi-fi camera so you cannot use ethernet cable with it you have to connect it through wi-fi only so you will have to choose a network and then enter the password and if the network which is selected here already you is not the wi-fi network that you want your camera to be connected to then you can tap here on reselect and then from the available wi-fi connections you can choose a connection which is of 2.4 gigahertz network since this is the wi-fi network that i want my camera to be connected to so i'll just tap on the same and then finally i'll click on next now it says the tapo device will connect to the following network which is the Wi-Fi network of my home so I'll just tap here on next now you can hear that my camera is connecting to the Wi-Fi and now you can give a name to your camera depending on the position since for me I'm going to place it above my gate on the right side so I'll just write it like that and then it's going to ask for the location of your camera so if you don't have any location for your camera then you can do that you can just tap here on custom then you can choose anyone from here let's say entrance and then tap on next then you have to choose an icon for your tapo device so i'll choose one icon here and next now it says you have configured your tapo device and it's ready for use sounds good and if you want to mount it to the wall then you can tap here it's going to give you instructions how to do that like first of all you have to take the device to a position to a place or a location which is close to a power source as well as it has a strong wi-fi signal so having a wi-fi signal is very important if the wi-fi signal is very weak then you will not be able to use your camera at such a location so you have to make sure the strength of wi-fi is good after that you can just tap on next and then you have to choose the mounting style that whether you want to mount it on the wall or you want to mount it on the roof or you want to mount it on a pole so you have to choose it accordingly after that you'll have to tap on next and according to the type of mounting that you have selected it's going to show you instructions how to do that so these are pretty simple instructions you will be able to follow them and after that you will be able to tap here on camera preview and then you can see the preview of the camera and then when you're happy with the position of the camera then you can just tap here on cross all right then just tap here on sounds good then after that is if it shows about the tapo care cloud services it's up to you if you want to buy this plan or you want to use it for 30 days it's totally up to you as you can see it provides unlimited cloud storage so that's totally up to you or you can start a 30 days trial all the frequently asked questions are here if you want to go through them but anyways since i'm using a memory card inside my camera i'm not going to buy the tapo care cloud service so i can just tap here on skip and here i'll just say got it now it says set up local storage insert a micro sd card it's recommended to use a class 10 micro sd card so the memory card that i bought is class 10 and it has a 256 gb of space and it says after inserting a micro sd card confirm the camera view and related features like activity zones 
So you will have to mount your camera to the location where you want your camera to be installed so that you can set up the activity zones accordingly and also initialize the micro SD card in the Tapo app which means do not format the micro SD card in your computer just directly inst insert it into the camera and let the camera initialize it so let's say just tap on got it then firmware update so if you want your device to automatically update the firmware then you can select a time for the camera but you have to bear in mind that the camera will stop working during the update process even though the update is going to take only few minutes so if you want to set up the time you can do that or you can let it be on the default 3 am to 5 am and then just tap here on got it so you can see i have the gate left camera that is already set up here and then on the right side this is the new camera that i have to set now it says welcome to tapo camera now check out what your tapo camera can do so let's just click here on go 360 degree visual coverage with motion tracking which means it's going to provide motion tracking with 360 degree horizontal and 130 degree vertical range to capture everything with high speed rotation and you are going to get the notifications as well and then it has ai powered person detection which means it's going to identify human activities and send you notifications so if there's any motion in front of the camera like uh, the dogs are running in front of the camera then they will not be considered as humans so you will get the notification that motion has been detected but it will not be considered as a person so it's going to reduce the false alarms which are triggered by pets or other things then we have customizable sound and light alarm which means triggers the sound and light alarm to frighten away unwanted visitors records your audio as an alarm for more flexible scenarios which means in, you can actually record your voice as an alarm for unwanted situation or unwanted visitors and then let your camera play that voice in such scenarios then watch listen and chat now there is two-way audio communication available with your camera then you can just tap here on got it so this is the live view of my camera as you can see since i have not installed the camera on the wall till yet that's why it's just showing the inside of my room so let me install the camera and then we can talk about the other features of the camera all right guys so i have set up the camera outside my house and uh, you can see this is how the live view or the live feed looks and i shall remind you that it's around 8 43 pm here so it's very dark outside but because of one street light you can see everything very clear but when there's no light also the night vision of the camera is very good the night vision is very clear you can see the face of the person in front of the camera very clearly then let's check out the features of this camera so the first one is talk now this is very simple you just, just have to tap and hold here and then you can start talking and the person who is standing in front of the camera will be able to hear the sound very clearly it's loud enough for a person to listen very clearly and also you can observe how the camera works just now one guy was riding a bicycle in front of the camera and i got a notification saying that there was a motion so that's how the camera works but we'll talk about those features later let's see the pan and tilt feature now this feature is very useful using this feature you can actually patrol left or right or up or down you can change the live view of the camera now if you have set the camera in a particular view and you don't want to disturb that view you can actually save that view first so you can see this option which says mark position so you can save that position like you can give it a name like uh, for me i'll just say Creta because my car is visible here so i'll just name it as Creta and save it and now i'll just show how we can change the live view of the camera so we just have to use these arrows and if you start hitting the arrows you can see how the camera is going to change the live view when we talk about the vertical position we can change the feet by 180 degrees you can see the camera is literally focused at the extreme bottom of the camera let's go upside i'll press the up button and you can see the tilt has reached the maximum extent in this direction 
So this is the message that you are going to get if you try to change the position beyond the maximum capacity of the camera. So this was the vertical tilting. Now let's talk about the right and left. When we talk about the left right, it can rotate to 360 degrees. So you can see I'm going to focus on behind the camera that is the wall right behind the camera. You can see. And uh, in the same way, you can turn 180 degrees to the right. So in total, that is 360 degrees. And then if you have saved a particular position and you just want to get into that position, then you can just tap here on marks. Then coming under this subheading, you can just tap on the position that you have saved. So as soon as you touch the position, the camera is going to get into that position very quickly like this and also you can observe the features of the camera whenever there is anyone in the live feed you're going to get messages like there was a motion det detected or there was a person detected something like that and the live feed does not remain active throughout the time you keep the app open you have to refresh the feed then we have voice call now this is also somewhat like the talk feature but here in this voice call you can just connect with your camera using your app and then you can literally talk with the person who is standing outside like a two-way conversation. So you can talk from here and you can turn off the speaker if you want to talk using the earphone and if you want to turn off the mic you can do that from here as well. And then we have privacy mode. Now this privacy mode is also very helpful. Why it is very helpful I'll tell you because if you want to hide or turn off the live feed of the camera you don't want to record due to any privacy reason you can just tap here and uh, the camera literally and physically turns off the lens it hides the lens so that there is no view or there is no live feed from the camera nothing can be recorded the lens is physically hidden when we turn on the privacy mode when we turn it off the lens is going to be opened up as you can see here in the live view also then we have alarm feature we'll talk about the alarm when we are in the settings and the tapo care is the premium feature that you will have to buy and subscribe to and uh, it's around 319 for one device per month and it's going to give 30 days unlimited storage so no matter how much storage you are going to need how much you are going to save you are going to get that it's the premium one then there is one basic also which is for 249 and it's for seven days anyways i'm not going to buy that and then we have playback and memory now this playback and memory will be available if you have inserted one memory card and uh, after inserting the memory card you will have to format the memory card you will keep getting messages about formatting the memory card if you format it then the recording is going to get started and this is how the recordings look like so whenever there is a person detected then you will get a different subtitle here you can see it's written person detected and if i tap on it then you can see when was this recording done and uh, who was the person who was detected in the camera so you can see little children playing there and then one guy is walking in front of my house so this is the person detection feature then second one says motion det detection which means there was a motion a vehicle has crossed and you can see the vehicle so this is the best feature of the tapo cameras we don't have to record continuously the camera is going to record only when there is a detection of some kind so that even when you are checking back the recordings it's going to save a lot of time you don't have to go through the entire recording you'll just have to go through the detections in this way and then here if you see we have this memory tab also this memory tab is for the recordings which you save on your phone like uh, let's say i have tapped on this person detection and i want to record the person who is going to walk in the live view and i want to keep that clip on my phone as well even though the clips are saved in the memory card you can take out the memory card anytime and then transfer it to your computer and then mobile but if you tap here then it's going to be recorded in your mobile also it's very handy 
if you are very far away from the camera you don't have to physically come back to the camera to take out the memory card and then you can actually play the recording and save it in your phone so if i tap on memory now you can see that it has been recorded and then you can download this to the memory of your mobile or you can just delete it like this so which means the recordings which you can see here are actually not on your phone they are being fetched from the camera these recordings are on the memory card and the memory card is in the camera so these are getting fetched from the camera if you want them into your phone then you'll have to play the recording and then record it using this recording icon and you can see how the camera works i keep getting notification like this one motion was detected whenever there is some kind of motion in front of the camera which saves a lot of time and a lot of memory so this was the playback and memory mode in the same way if there is something happening in front of the camera and you want to take a picture you can just tap here on the camera icon and the picture will be taken if you have added multiple cameras then you can tap here on this small icon and then you can see or check out the different cameras and then this auto says which mode you have selected whether it is the day mode or the night mode i have set it on auto mode because by doing this i don't have to change the night or day mode it's going to be taken care of automatically and then after that let's check out the settings i'll just tap on the settings icon and uh, let's check all the settings one by one so i'll tap here on the first one using this one you can change the device icon and the second option says camera name if you want to change the name of the camera you can do that from here then it shows the name of the wi-fi network that it's connected to and the signal strength also so the signal strength should be good at the location where you have installed your camera so that it's easier for you to view the feed from the camera then the hardware version is there firmware version is there if you tap on the firmware version then you can check for the updates so i'll just check for updates and it says i have the latest version i'll just tap on back button all right then the second option here it says location so under location if you want to save the address of your camera you can do that so that you know where your camera is installed then we have the time zone you can select the time zone according to the place you are in then we have the invert image in case if you have installed the camera upside down then you can use this option which is invert image it's going to invert the image and then you will get the proper view so i'll just turn it off then we have status led if you want to turn off the led on your camera so that no one is aware whether the camera is on or off then you can do that from here you can turn off the status led from here like this then we have the privacy zones when enabled the custom privacy zones cannot be viewed or monitored so if there is a zone in the live feed which you don't want to capture then you can create a privacy zone you just have to open it up and then tap here on add zone and then you can add a privacy zone which you don't want to capture like this so whatever happens in this privacy zone will not be detected by the camera and you will not get notifications like the ones i am getting right now for that privacy zone so if you want to save that you can do that otherwise you can turn off the privacy zone that is totally up to you then we have the detection and alerts this is very important let's see the motion detection now the sensitivity of the motion has to be set in a way that you don't get a lot of notification unnecessary like there are cases when leaves are going to fall down from the tree if the sensitivity is very high then you are going to get notification even in those cases so you have to keep that in mind while setting the motion sensitivity then we have to set the activity zone which means you have to set the zone which will be considered for recording when there is an activity so you can just tap here on activity zone and as you can see i have set the activity zone as the entire view because i want to record anything that happens in front of my camera so the entire camera view has been set as the activity zone for me but for you you can add separate zones and you can make the zones in a way which fulfills your requirement like this one and uh, these zones can overlap each other so you don't have to worry about overlapping zones then we have ai detection 
under AI detection we have person detection so if this feature is on then you will get notification whenever there is a person is detected in front of the camera so the notifications will be different I'll show you what I mean so these are the notifications from the camera you can see that I have notifications like motion was detected so I can be sure that there was a vehicle movement that's why the motion was detected but when there is a notification saying person was detected that means a person was in front of the camera or a person was in the camera view so these kind of notifications I do check out especially when there is a person detected and then after that we have camera tampering which means if someone tries to touch your camera or gets too near to the camera then you are going to get different notification which says someone is trying to tamper your camera and it's going to be recorded as well so you can tick mark this one also and then sensitivity you can set as you like then we have activity notifications now if you want to keep getting notifications like I am getting you can see how many notifications I keep getting from the camera if you want to keep getting notifications like that then you'll have to let this activity notifications be on and then second one we have is rich notifications when this one is enabled the camera will send you notification along with the snapshot whenever they send detection of any kind whether it's a motion detection or a person detection you are going to get notification along with a snapshot if you tick mark this rich notifications and then you can decide the time of getting the notifications like you don't want to get any notification during the day you just want the detections to be recorded then you can set a time like this one during the night so during the night if there is any detection you are going to get notification but during the day you will not get any notification even though all such detections are going to be saved for your future reference but you will not get notifications on the phone but during the night when there is any kind of detection you are going to get notifications also and the recordings will be saved on your memory card as well so this was about the notifications settings then we have camera alarm now we can set the device to trigger a sound alarm when it detects activity let me turn this on let's say during the night if a person is detected you want your camera to sound a kind of a alarm to warn off the person or an unwanted person then you can set up the alarm like this you can use sound as well as light for the alarm and then the sound type also you can choose from here you can play the sound And also you can use custom sound and then add your own sound by recording it and you can start recording your own sound for up to 15 seconds so a custom sound that you record will be of 15 seconds only then you can set the duration of the alarm so duration can be 5 seconds 10 seconds 30 seconds or you can make it any other selection of your choice or you can just let it be on default then alarm event type now it's up to you whether you want to sound the alarm in which detection like I don't want to sound the alarm if there is a motion detection or a person detection I want to sound the alarm if someone tries to get too close to the camera which means if someone tries to tamper with the camera I want to sound the alarm in that condition so I'll just set it on camera tampering and then I want this to happen during the night only so I can set up in this way then we have motion tracking now when motion tracking is set to on and there is a motion in the camera view the camera is going to continuously track that activity until it has stopped which means if there's a person walking in front of the camera and you have set up the motion tracking the camera is going to continuously track that person until it has stopped or it has gone outside the view of the camera you have turned this on like this motion tracking after that let's check in the camera how it does motion tracking so I'll just wait for a person to walk in front of the camera and you can see how camera has started tracking that person until it went out of the view of the camera so this is motion tracking and also you can observe one thing from here that after the motion tracking is over the view of the camera is not getting back to its original view so in that case you will have to open the marks and then select the position that you want it to be on 
so i'll just turn off the motion tracking for now but you can keep it on all right now after the detection and alerts we have micro sd card it's going to show the health of your micro sd card whether it's in a good condition or not then it's going to show how much is the space is on your camera and whether the loop recording is on or not when the loop recording is on the new recordings are going to overwrite the previous or the old recordings when storage is not enough and the old recordings are going to be overwritten in a way the oldest recordings will be overwritten first so that is how the loop recording is going to work and then we have recording schedule now depending on your requirement you don't have to record everything if you want to record whenever there is a detection in the camera then you can set it the way i have set it but if you want continuous recording then you can set it like this and let's say you want the continuous recording to be at night so let's say from 12 am to 8 am you want the continuous recording and after that you want the detection recording that is during the day you want the detection recording but during the night you want continuous recording in this way so that is totally up to you in which way you want to record and you can customize it down to every single hour or let's say on sundays you want it to record continuously for the entire day so this is entirely up to you and your requirement for me i have set everything on detection recording only i don't want to waste the memory recording nothing so i'm just going to keep it this way but you can change it according to your need then after that we have video quality the tapo c500 camera offers full hd recording that is 1080p or if you want to save space and you want to record more videos on your memory card then you can go for this one that is the second one 720p hd video then the third one is 360p which offers the smallest data rate so it will be very easy to stream also and it's going to take very less space on the memory card but i'll not suggest to go for this 360p because the quality of the video will be too less to understand what's happening in the camera i'll not suggest you to go with that then we have advanced settings you can open this up then first one is privacy mode privacy mode i have showed you already if you turn this on then a physical barrier is going to be placed on your camera some sort of barrier so that your lens cannot capture anything your lens will be covered physically then we have power line frequency in india we have 60 hertz but you can just leave it on auto then we have device account just tap here on understand and agree to use now this is for creating an account for camera login via third party portals so that you can watch the live view or the live feed of the camera from a third party nvr or nas device you can do that by login here and also you can see what's written on the downside note tapo care works best with one of the nvr or micro sd card recording not both which means you can either use micro sd card recording or you can connect the camera with the nvr you cannot do both of them at this point the nvr recording will be disabled to restart recording on the nvr remove the micro sd card from the camera so if you are recording on the micro sd then you cannot record on the nvr if you have connected an nvr and if you want the recordings to be done on your nvr then you will have to take out the memory card from the camera and then just restart your camera i'll do a separate video about setting up the camera with nvr and how to use the nvr to record the videos as well as how to watch them for now let's stick to the settings then we have this option which is on screen display settings now if you want to change what is being displayed on the live camera view then you can do that from here if you want the date and time stamp to be there then you can tick mark this one and then if you want to display a kind of a text on the camera then you can turn this one on also and then you can write here whatever text you want to write let's say you want to write the address of your house or you just want to write the position of the camera then you can just write like that and uh, display logo is going to give a small logo at the corner left bottom corner of the live feed and the logo is of tapo so i'm just going to turn this off then we have pan and tilt correction so the camera is going to be set to the default position if you tap on this and i'll just show what it means you can see it here
after that you will have to change the position of the lens so i'll just tap on the marks and then select a predefined position like, like this in this way you can save many more positions according to your need and then scroll through them easily then we have diagnostics it says enable this feature only when something is wrong with your camera to save locks so that you can use those locks to understand what is wrong with your camera it's very helpful for troubleshooting but if there's no problem with the camera then it's recommended to disable this feature so let this feature be off then we have one more feature which says share device it's very helpful if you want to share the live view of your camera with your family members you can do that from here you can just tap here on share and then you can add the email id of the person you want to share with the person will get a link on setting up the view for them but they will have limited functionality they will not be able to change or modify the settings of the camera but they will be able to see the live view of the camera and they will get notifications whenever there is any kind of detection i'll show you how this sharing of device work also so let me just add here one email id of mine so it says this email has not been registered so i'll have to register this email on a tapo application before doing that all right guys so i have my another phone with me i have opened up the tapo app and uh, here you can see we have this option that says sign up just going to tap on that and then we have to enter the email id that you want to sign up with tapo so i'll just quickly do that all right and then we'll have to select a password so i'll just quickly select a password i will just untick this one subscribe to the tp link newsletter and tick mark this one i accept the terms of use and then tap on sign up then we will have to activate our account so for that you will just have to open your email app whether you are using a email app on your phone or you are using a browser just open up your email and then you will receive one email like this from tp link and you will have to tap here on click to finish registration and you'll have to keep in mind that this button is going to be active only for one hour so you have to do this activation within one hour so once you have activated your email id you're going to get a message like this congratulations your id has been activated then coming back to the application you can just tap on activated and login all right then you can just directly sign up into the application now after signing up to the application you can see there is nothing in my app none of the devices are visible here so for that i'll have to open the tapo app in my original phone which has the registered email id now from here in my phone i'll just share my device with the email id that i have created just now so i'll just tap here on share now it says sharing invitation sent just tap on got it all right now coming back to our second phone you can see that uh, there is one notification just tap on it and then you can see it says Tanzil Osama shared a device with you just tap on it and uh, you just have to accept it from here and the device has been accepted now coming back to the home page or the home screen of this app you can see now I have that camera which says gate right i can just open it up now if we talk about the features that are available in sharing mode is that we can use the talk feature the voice call feature we can use the pan and tilt feature and also the position that i have saved in my original phone which is the owner of the camera that position is also visible here pan and tilt is also working here in sharing mode you can notice that and we cannot use privacy mode which means we cannot turn off the camera from the sharing mode we cannot turn on or off the alarm mode in the sharing mode then we can play back the recordings all the detections that have been done can be played back from the sharing mode so if you have shared your device with your family or anyone they will be able to play back the recordings which are done on the memory card of your camera let's check out the settings under the settings you can see none of the settings are enabled all of them are off which means we cannot change any setting of the camera 
we can only remove the camera from here nothing else can be done because it is in sharing mode so that's very obvious but i'm very happy and satisfied with the amount of functionality and the features that are available in the sharing mode as well if i'm sharing my camera with someone i, I want them to be able to see the live view as well as the playback and memory that's all I don't want them to be the admin of the camera so that is exactly what is allowed in the sharing feature now coming back to the original phone after share device the next option is auto reboot if you want to reboot your camera at a specific time then you can select it from here you can schedule the reboot even though reboot is going to take only few minutes but you can set the reboot in this manner but for me i'll just let it be on off i don't want to reboot my camera and uh, since i have two cameras one is on the left side which is a bullet camera i'll just try to add the second camera here in the feed so that i can view both of them together in this way so even if you are having more than one camera then they are going to appear something like that here the cameras will be showed in different icons so you can open one of them and then if you change the feed of the camera by tapping on this icon so that you can view multiple live views at once you can see the boxes like this in a grid kind of way then you can tap on one of the grid the plus icon and then you can select the rest of the cameras and then just tap on add and the live feeds will be visible something like this so you can see the feed of more than one camera at one go so i hope you were able to understand how to set up c500 camera and i hope i was able to explain most of the important features of the camera how to set it up how to use it how to tilt it or the detection features and how the playback and memory is going to work i hope i have cleared most of the doubts but in case if you are having any other doubts you can always reach out to me you can leave a comment down in the comment section or you can reach me on my facebook page you can leave a message there and i'll be happy to revert back to you so that's all for this video guys i hope you liked the content that i had made i hope you had a good time watching the video so don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel i'm going to see you in the next video till then take care and thanks for watching